The current bloodline kinda sucks. Despite all of the group's successes and all of the positives that it's done, it's made WWE hot again, people have become stars out of it like Jey Uso and Sami Zayn, and then Roman Reigns elevating himself into a megastar. But, ever since WrestleMania 40, this group has kind of fallen off a cliff. So let's talk about it. I don't think the wrestlers are bad or anything, it's just... Okay, maybe one of them is bad, but like... It's not like they're doing bad work and they're not trying, it's just it just kind of feels like meh, you know? Jacob Fatu is great, Tama Tonga's fine, Solo's trying his best, and Tonga Loa is there, you know? He's there to, you know, botch things. So, my issue isn't as the talent as much, my main issue is this new incarnation of the group, simply put, sucks. At least compared to the original Bloodline. Like, if we just compare and contrast the group, like, look at this, and look at this. Like, it's not even comparable, especially if you try and compare each member with the former. And you know what? Screw it. Well, just to get my point across more, let's compare these groups just to get my point across. Wait, I just repeated myself. Alright, let's start with uh, Paul Heyman. So, Heyman isn't a part of this group. Well, he was a part of the new Bloodline for a bit. He eventually got kicked out, so the current state of the Bloodline has already... is. The current state of the Bloodline is already down one point. Edge, OG Bloodline. In this comparison, we compared the Usos to the Tongans. Tama Tonga, Tonga Loa. Both of these duos have one guy that's a bigger star, and the other is kind of a meme. What I mean is that one brother is over the other in terms of being, like, a star in wrestling. Jimmy Uso versus Tonga Loa. While Jimmy isn't as popular as his brother these days, Tonga Loa is just kind of a joke. <laughs> Plus, Jimmy is an Uso. While Tama Tonga is good, he is no main event Jey Uso, who is one of the most popular babyfaces in the company. Even as tag teams, it's not much of a comparison. I mean, you compare these two to the Usos, it's like, not even close. Edge, original bloodline. Now you might be thinking, but wait, he's the leader, and yeah, you're right, he is. But we're going to be doing a comparison of Solo Sokoa Pre 2.0 versus Jacob Fatu, who's now the enforcer of the group and has taken that role. Solo was actually pretty good in this role, the silent enforcer who let his actions do the talking. Jacob Fatu is pretty much the opposite. While Solo is reserved and acts for the tribal chief when needed, Jacob Fatu is just a crazy maniac, destroying everything in his path with just no chill whatsoever. While I would say that Jacob Fatu is better than Solo, Solo still played his role very well in the bloodline. Still, Jacob Fatu is just so good at what he does that he just outshines not only Solo, but like the entire group. Hell, look at how they book Jacob Fatu and compare it to the other members. Like, they clearly protect him over the others. Like, Tonga Loa gets beat up every week, as well as Tama Tonga. Solo also takes damage, but Jacob is, like, protected. Edge, do bloodline. This isn't even comparable. No matter how much the WWE pushes Solo Sokoa, comparing him to Roman Reigns is a no contest. Comparing Roman Reigns to Sokoa is literally a joke. But fine, let's just try and do it, for, for fun's sake. Roman Reigns, most WrestleMania main events in history. Four-year title reign. Defeated The Undertaker, Brock Lesnar, Triple H, the list goes on and on. Solo Sokoa, no titles won, minus NXT, but that, that doesn't count. Went on a 0-34 losing streak, beat Wash John Cena, and got a few wins throughout the summer. This is like if WCW took Hollywood Hulk Hogan out of the NWO and replaced him with, um... Scott Norton. Yeah, it could work, but no one is going to take it as seriously as before. Edge, ritual bloodline. So yeah, that doesn't seem too good, but just to pile on even further, I'll add no Sami Zayn to the new group. And look at that, one to four. And the one win that the new group gets is that Jacob Fatu is better than Solo Sokoa, who is the leader of the entire group. Alright, I think I've gotten my point across that I think that the original bloodline, the 1.0, is better than 2.0. But WWE struck gold with this faction. The whole Bloodline storyline has been the dominant story of the company for the past four years, and I get why they want to continue with it. Granted, if they wanted to, they could have just had Roman retain and, and continue the current storyline, but by WrestleMania 39, the Bloodline storyline reached its climax at this point. It was just moving along, just chugging along. For Cody to lose again at WrestleMania 40 after losing at the previous show would have killed his momentum and would have been one of the worst booking decisions in the history of this company. 
It would also have been bad for Roman Reigns as well, as this was needed for his character. He needed to lose the championship in order for him to move on. He just kind of became the same person over and over again. And granted, Roman was great, but I mean, like, you gotta change, man. After four years of doing the same thing... So yeah, the current bloodline had to end. It's just that the 2.0 version is much less interesting. But at the same time, should have it continue on after Roman? Well, the main problem I find with this faction is that it's stretching something out after it's finished and it feels like it's trying to ride something out as long as possible. While I get the reason, you know, generate money and, and attention and all that, it's not the same and I think it hurts this group. At the time of this recording, we are approaching bad blood, so a new member might be added, but that won't really fix the issues of the current incarnation of the Bloodline. Unless they bring back The Rock for this. The group's gonna continue to be underwhelming in comparison. So I'm just gonna make some bold predictions for the Bloodline that will probably be wrong. Predictions. At Bad Blood, Cody and Roman are teaming up to make a super team of sorts to fight Jacob Fatu and Solo Sokoa. I think that someone will debut and help Bloodline 2.0 out. It could be The Rock, but I'm pretty doubtful on that because The Rock really doesn't work any other events. You think he's going to work a War Games match? Are you kidding me? So, it'll probably be someone like either Brazilla Fatu or Hikulio. Regardless, Cody and Roman will probably lose because of some Bloodline shenanigans, which is classic with this group. This sets up the War Games match of Survivor Series. Bloodline 2.0 versus Roman Reigns, Cody Rhodes, Randy Orton, Kevin Owens, and AJ Styles, who's apparently returning next week. At War Games, I think the babyfaces will end up winning, and on the SmackDown following the War Games match, Kevin Owens is going to turn heel on Cody Rhodes. And then, but just because they lost War Games doesn't mean that Bloodline 2.0 are done with Roman Reigns, as they still want to beat up Roman Reigns because he's a, he sucks and he's awful. So Solo Sokoa is going to fight Roman Reigns at the Royal Rumble. Solo Sokoa takes the L here and Bloodline 2.0 starts to crumble. This leads to Jacob Fatu fighting Roman Reigns at WrestleMania 41, which is really bold. But not only do I think he's going to fight Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, I think Jacob Fatu is going to go over Roman Reigns, which again is very bold. But it'd be a massive win if they really want to elevate Jacob Fatu to the next level. If this happens, the other Bloodline members will probably turn on Jacob Fatu and the group just disintegrates, completely falls apart. Jacob Fatu goes into the main event picture, Tama Tonga and Solo stay in the mid-card, and Tonga Loa, well, look, I mean, he can go to AEW, but I don't think it's going to really fix anything for him. So, what is the problem with the Bloodline? Well, mainly, it's just a watered-down, underwhelming incarnation of a previous great group. It's like the original NWO and WCW with Hogan, Hall, and Nash and all the others. And then you have NWO 2000, where it's much lamer and just kind of ass comparison. That's what Bloodline 2.0 is, and that's why they suck. Thanks for watching, and take care, everyone.